Hi, this is your live streamer, Free Man Sullivan. And we're down here at the San Francisco Federal Building at Mission and 7th Street for the No Dapple Protest, hashtag No DAPL. And uh, we're just getting underway. Uh, for those of you, uh, so we'll just hang out for a little bit until we get started.
You have all asked now here at this meeting a message to the spirit. Take the court to shut down the West Coast. So DC and Wall Street be my toast. Give it to the True White Brother in service to you and the True White Brother.
Just joining us, we're here at the No Dakota Access Pipeline Solidarity Protest here in San Francisco. We're at the Federal Building. Thanks for watching. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. That was the opening prayer. I guess we're going to turn around here and have some speakers up. Good afternoon, relatives. My name is Karina Gould. I am Chochenyo and Karkina Loni. This is the land of the Ramatush people, the Ohlone people, the original people from this area. So I welcome you today to this land. I want to thank all of our sisters and brothers for coming out here in solidarity for our sisters and brothers in North Dakota right now. Let's give them a little love. <laughs> When we gather together, we gather together in prayer and it creates an energy that we can stand out to the rest of the world. So for me, I'm very blessed that I'm here on our home territory, that I get to be able to speak in front of you. And my heart is there with our brothers and sisters in North Dakota holding down the line, right? Our hearts are there. There's over a thousand people. How beautiful is that to think? that thousands of Indian people are gathering together, gathering this energy with their ancestors there on the land to stop this pipe from going through. We're here today to show our solidarity for those, those ancestors that are there that are holding up the warriors, right? We have to remember our ancestors and as indigenous people, it's our ancestors that hold us up every single day. When we do this work, we do not do this work alone. We do this work because our ancestors were there before us that put us here to get today. So today we're here in solidarity for our brothers and sisters. And I bring our solidarity from the Ohlone Nations here in the Bay Area to our brothers and sisters in North Dakota. I want to remember that, there, that this particular fight is a fight that has been started by women. That women all over the world are fighting for the water. Our sisters have a particular connection to water. We hold as women our children in our body in water for 10 months. We are that special, we have that special connection with the water because of our moon, because of the, the way that the, the moon moves the water in that special kind of way. It also moves us in ceremony every month. So we as women have taken up this stand to hold the space for the water and to protect it. Here in the Bay Area, Aurora, uh, Momea, I can't where are you at, Aurora? Oh. <laughs> Has been a water walk every year for four years now, five years now, um, protecting the water. They bring in an elder, Mona Stonefish, to do that prayer at that water. Then they, there's women that go into the lakes and to the rivers, and they say those prayers for the water. We have women that are in Brazil and Ecuador and in the jungles all over South and Central America that are standing for the water. 
We have women that are at the front lines standing to hold back the hold back all of these horrible things that are happening that would affect the water. We have to remember our brothers and sisters who are also fighting within the cities, like Flint, Michigan, who have horrible water conditions because we have not taken care of it as human beings. And now we have to do that. It's our responsibility as an indigenous people, but people from all walks of life. Water is not a renewable resource. Water is something that we each need and cannot survive without. We as human beings can't survive, but neither can the plants, neither can the birds, neither can the fish, neither can the, fly, the, um, the flying, uh, the four-legged animals. None of us can survive without the water, and it's a blessing. Here in California, we have suffered a drought. Our brothers and sisters, the salmon, are having a hard time right now because they can't get to where they need to get to in order to spawn. And we are about to lose them as our relatives if we as human beings aren't a voice for them. So in order for us to start this time off today, I want to offer a prayer. So when I do this prayer, I want you all to bring your ancestors into this space because our ancestors are going to take this good energy and they're going to hold up those folks in North Dakota for as long as they need to be there. Right? I have nephews that have come to me and said, Auntie, should I go to North Dakota? I have a family. Should I leave now? And I said, no, nephews, you know, there's going to be a need for a second wave. So if you're itching to go, wait for that second wave. Right? Because we need you here as well. We need you guys to help to put this together, to send support out there, and donations and prayers in different kinds of ways. So there's going to be a need for you on those front lines. So let's just wait together. And let's say a prayer to start this off. Grandmothers and grandfathers, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this beautiful circle of people from all walks of life that have come together. We send our good energy to our sisters and brothers that are on the front line in North Dakota and all over the world as they stand against these corporations. We ask for strength and humility while we're doing this work. We ask that we always come in prayer and that we do the tough work that we need to do in good ways. That we do this work that we were put here on this earth to do for the next seven generations. We pray for the water, grandmothers and grandfathers. We pray as pitiful human beings that we are able to come together and fix this dilemma. That we are gonna stop these pipelines no matter where they are in the world, that they will not devastate the earth anymore that we stop these spills, that we take this earth and love it and not take it for granted, this home that you have given us. We ask that you take care of all of us while we're here and that you take care of our families while we are here and that nobody comes of harm while we are doing this work, that we go home to our families in a good way with a full heart, that we remember the things that we are supposed to do every day that you help us when we're tired and when we're clogged with our thinking, that you help us with those good things, that that medicine comes to us. I thank you, grandfathers and grandmothers, for, for bringing the women to the forefront to show us the way to help us to be the good warriors we're supposed to be, to fight for the waters that we're supposed to for those next seven generations. We ask that the ancestors continue to take care of us we ask that you watch over all of us and that everything is good. That our children that are going to school right now at the beginning of this year, that they learn good things and they become good human beings because we are laying down that path or the red road for them. I ask the spe special prayers for those elders that are out there in North Dakota holding the line that the young people hear them. That we are able to do the things that we're supposed to do in good ways as adults in front of our children that we continue to have these places and spaces where we hold our ancestors up and that we send this good energy out to the world. I ask that all of these good things. Oh, oh, oh. Um, so we have a couple of things that we wanted to do. I don't know where Penny went. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking across. It's so beautiful to see all of you guys. Another, uh, let's send out some more love to North Dakota. Yeah. Well, Penny Opal Plant is 
one of those people that have been doing the work here in the Bay Area. She's been doing the water walks um, uh, along the whole corridor where all of these horrible um, places are that they have the, um, the, the industry of gas and oil, right? And have been fighting that for, for years now. And we are lucky to have her in the Bay Area doing this work with us. Um, she's going to talk about her solidarity um, with the North Dakota people here. Um, we actually, it was interesting the way this all came uh, came together. Um, I actually got a, a, both Penny and I got a, a message on Facebook from our friend Pam Tao Lee, who's been a great organizer on environmental justice and um, and the uh, APEN, the Asia Pacific Environmental Network, for many, many years. And she said, are we going to do something, right? Are we going to do something? And I was like, yeah. I was like, I, I've been up for like a heck of hours. I'll, I'll get back to you. And then pretty soon, Aurora, who's been doing work on the water for a while here in the Bay Area as well with the water walk, she said, what are we going to do? And I said, OK, I get it, Ancestor. Somebody's pushing us to do this stuff. So really, it's the women that have come together in a very small group of us that kind of gathered you guys all together today to uh, remember what our responsibility is yes. as human beings. And so with that, I want to pass this over to Penny. Uh, there are people here, if you guys are feeling a little unsecure, there's security here. They have red armbands. Are you guys with red armbands? You want to raise your hand? All right. If there's something, somebody that's uh, bothering you, I think that we're all really good folks around here um, that's doing this, this work. Um, and then we should have... Alright, uh, we have So there's a couple of things. There's sandwich boards. There's one up here. There might be a couple of people that are wearing them. We'd like another person. But these actually tell you some specific things that you can do in order to help with the folks that are out there in North Dakota. There's petitions to sign. There's places that you can go and donate. There's um, also legal help that you can donate to. Uh, and so we're going to ask you guys to go ahead and to walk around with that. Take a picture. We're not trying to hand out a bunch of stuff, right? Take a picture, put it up, post your Facebook pictures up, um, and here's Penny. Good evening, relatives. So good to see you all here. As we open up our hearts and our minds to what's happening to the water and to our relatives who are at it's Standing Rock at the Sacred Stone Camp. Yeah. So let's hear it for them. Yeah. So as, as Karina said, the water, it connects us all. The air, it connects us all. Even this concrete is part of Mother Earth and it connects us all. We are one being with the air, the water, and the earth. Can you feel her? She is talking to us. She is telling us. It is time for us to rise up as one human family and say we've had enough. No more. No more harms. No more mess. We're done. Are we done? Yeah. How done are we? We're done. We are done. Halea just said we're overdone. Still overdone? So I grew up over in Richmond across the bay. My family's been over there for since the 1930s. So I grew up in the shadow of the Chevron refinery. So I have an intimate relationship with the ship, with all these refineries, these five refineries along our corridor there. And I can tell you that it's a problem. And we are all invited to join us next year for the last of our refinery corridor healing walks. When we start every single walk with prayers for the water. So in this bucket is water from occupied Pomo land, from the um, spring that's up there. Michael, what's it called? Anyway, from the spring. So this water is right from Mother Earth's belly from deep down. So this water, I think it's Benji here who's driving to North Dakota. Benji, where are you? Okay, so you're going to take this water with you. And we're going to ask each.
each and every one of you to put your prayers in this water for the Missouri River. Prayers for the strength of the people that are drinking that water from the Missouri River. Apologies to the Missouri River. We have a lot to apologize to the water for. We're going to apologize to it. And we're going to think about the water that we love most in the whole world, wherever that special place for you is. And pour that love from your heart into this water. And our friend Benji here is going to take it to the camp for us. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah. So now I want to introduce the other part of the trio here, Pam Tao Lee. All of you all being here, it's her responsibility that we're all here today. So let's really tell her how much we love her.
daily and while we're here today I know we already said a prayer earlier and so we're um, sending our prayers up there and our good thoughts and our healing energy up there and um, the song um, that I'm gonna sing today is a uh, I don't know more song by uh, Juanita Tallman from Canada from the blood tribe genocide we have uh, lived through genocide 
but we're still strong and our children are even stronger. Every generation uh, it gets stronger and uh, we're grateful to the supporters and those in this uh, United States who, who see wrong and, um, and, and, help, and help us. So we're grateful that we, uh, we're gonna stop the Dakota Access Pipeline. Yeah. And we need to stop a lot that's going on in this country. Uh, it's all over. It isn't just uh, Indian people. And uh, like John LaBelle, uh, an attorney, my friend who's in uh, now in Albuquerque, what he what he always said was Indian people are the canaries in the mine. What happens to us is just the beginning. It starts happening all the way down the line. And in this case, it's happening to Washitu people, to white people, to ranchers and farmers. Their land's being taken. And uh, this, this water is life. We cannot live without it. Uh, yet, uh, in trying to get this oil through, they want to put it under the Missouri River. And that is, that is dangerous. And there's also the, uh, you know, the, the other, uh, there's, there's water that, well, it's just going to, it's going to hurt everybody. So, uh, in North Dakota, they're praying for a resolution here. And I'm glad to come here and hear the prayers. Uh, we need to uh, ask for help from uh, to Goshala and all those that can help us and to uh, to uh, fight. Don't just, you know, turn your head and put your head in the sand. When something goes wrong with this earth, it affects us all. We can't live without air, without water, and all that. And it's up to us to let the government know and to let um, these um, companies know that profit, you know, that profits don't keep us alive. That we need, but we need to protect the earth. So I, I'm thankful for being here and for all of you, you know, talk to five more people, uh, ask them to join the cause. And there's a guy walking around here with um, uh, how you can go online and donate to the legal defense and to uh, bring in water to the, our people in North Dakota that's been taken away. That's what this is about. And uh, uh, to help the campers. So I, uh, I thank you. Uh, I'm I'm not as uh, strong as I used to be, but in my heart and in my mind, I'll never stop. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for coming out and speaking and telling us about um, County Coup. Uh, one of the things that we want to do, and I, I'm hoping that you guys are all really good with uh, social media, so please put the hashtag no DAPL, that's uh, no Dakota Action Pipeline, uh, Access Pipeline, I'm sorry, uh, so no DAPL um, on your things and then we can all find them, um, so we're um, hoping that we can do that. We can also use the no DAPL Solidarity SF if you just want to get us all in there. And so we're trying to get we're trying to get a couple of them going on here. Uh, so we'd like to ask uh, Manny Lieras to come up and offer a song before our next uh, speaker comes up. I work with Manny for the last ten years or so. Uh, he's been working in, with our young people for uh, many years and uh, has come uh, done the powwow circuit. Um, has done a lot of um, songs in the community for us um, all over the place. And so I'd like to ask Manny to come up and uh, offer a song for us right now. Yeah, thank you, Karina. Um, as Karina said, I've 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 been able to uh, acquire the knowledge of a, of a lot of different songs over the years. And um, a couple years back, we got really active as communities all across this nation. Um, 
when some of the I don't know more movements started up in Canada and moved their way down through the uh, the southern territories here in the United States, and then all throughout the the globe. And so there was a particular round dance song that became really, really popular. And so what I'm going to ask for you all to do tonight is in solidarity with our relatives standing at, uh, in Standing Rock who are fighting to maintain their quality of way of life, that, that water that, that we all need to sur survive. I'm going to ask that we do a round dance here. Uh, what I would like for you all to do is just create a, a couple of big circles here. Not, not one huge circle because... It'll just be too massive, and so just if we can just create some movement within this area here in a, in a circular motion. And this is, again, this is that prayer with every step that you take, if you have that ability, when you take that step with your right, that's a prayer. As you follow, or with your left, excuse me, as you follow with your right foot, that's a prayer. It's a celebration of our of our, of our our abilities. It's our it's our prayer, again, that, that what we do, what we're doing right now has an impact seven generations forward. And with this water, what, what we're all standing here for tonight, this testimony that we're here for the right reason, we're here for doing the right thing. So you please join me at this time. So it looks like we got a pretty good crowd of about, I don't know, maybe 200 people here.
relatives. It's an honor to be here and see so many of you. It really makes my heart sing to see all of this coming out for our brothers and sisters up in Standing Rock. Louder? Okay. Oops. Sorry. Louder. Wow. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. My name's Osprey Oriel Lake, and I am with the Women's Earth and Climate Action Network, WeCan International, and we are dedicating our work to women on the front lines of climate change all over the world. And so I felt it was my duty to go up to uh, be with our relatives up in North Dakota, especially the women who are fighting so hard to protect and defend the waters. <laughs> Mani Wikoni. Mani Wikoni is water, is life. This is the central call of all the Standing Rock Sioux and the allies and protectors of the land and water up in North Dakota right now. And as you know, there was a hearing today in Washington, D.C. And uh, the decision for the injunction was put off, and I just want to briefly read the statement from the Indigenous Environmental Network, <coughs> IEN, from Tom Goldtooth about this decision. He says, this decision to reschedule the injunction hearing to September is a disappointment to the Sacred Stone Spirit Camp and allies. However, it will allow the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and our Indigenous movement of prayer and resistance to the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline to grow. So we're going to use this time, aren't we, relatives, to organize more and get stronger and stronger. It was an incredible honor to be um, at the Sacred Stone Spirit Camp for several days. You cannot walk into that camp without tears coming to your eyes because of the incredible beauty and dedication of everyone there. The peacefulness, the care, the support of all the different tribes coming together is amazing. And as you know in the news it has been said that there's been violent protesters. This is so untrue. There is prayer there. There is no drugs and alcohol. There is no firearms there. It is a place of great peace and prayer and strategy and incredible movement building. We're seeing here the extraordinary power of indigenous leadership, which has been and will continue to be the driving force of action to challenge systemic injustice to people and land, to protect the earth and water for all generations. So let's hear it for indigenous people and indigenous rights. It was also said when I was there that uh, at the night when there is fires and council going on, some of the elders were saying that this is the biggest, most magnitude of gathering of indigenous nations in over 150 years. It was amazing. The, the amount of people coming in every day was phenomenal. When I was there, the Hoopa from California came. Uh, the Comanche had been there. Uh, we heard the Maori are sending a delegation. It's incredible what's going on all over the world, people coming together. And Hawaii, I mean, it was amazing from all over the country and around the world. Um, yet the authorities there are really trying to break up the camp. When I was there, Homeland Security had removed the water, the public health trailers, and the ambulances. But this has not deterred anyone, and everyone's come together to fulfill these needs. Yet there's also a very high alert, and there is an urgent appeal put out uh, for there to be international and national observers. Um, the statement was, we urgently seek national and international human rights observers to come to be aware of the rapidly escalating dangers facing this peaceful gathering. Please come and bear witness. And I heard that Amnesty International was sending a witness there, because I tell you, it is an amazing camp but there is always this tension that at any point some kind of authorities will come in and break up the cap and so there's a lot of concern for the women and children and a lot of things going on for preparations for that so we really need to be vigilant we need to offer our prayers and the last thing I'll say is that I have been to many different types of uh, encampments and different kinds of actions but the spirit of prayer there was phenomenal and I heard over and over again from people saying, this pipe is not going in the ground. 
We are going to protect our water with our lives. If this is the last place I stand, I will go down here before the drill touches that waterway. Water is life, and without water we can't live. And so people are putting their bodies on the line because this is a final stand for many. So I am standing here in support. We are putting our resources and time into this fight. Thank you all so much for coming out. Thank, Thank you, you very much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Give another hand up for Osprey. I'd like to introduce a friend of mine. Uh, we got to know each other just recently. Um, she moved here to the Bay Area. She's the executive director of the Black Mesa Water Coalition. Uh, has done a lot of work on the front lines. I'd like to uh, introduce to you Walea Johns. Um, greetings, everybody, relatives. Um, greetings to my relatives here, um, whose homeland I'm on, and we're all on the Loni people, the Miwok people. Thank you for having me here, and thank you for the organizers who are have put this event together to stand in solidarity to raise awareness for the rights of indigenous peoples, but also the rights of nature, the rights of Mother Earth. Oh, I forgot, I have my daughter here with me. Do you want to introduce yourself? Her name is Alawan. Alawan, Alawa. And her grandpa is Lakota Sioux. He gave her that name the song to sing and so that name is is resonates with her resonates with us as a family and we recently moved here from Black Mesa Arizona on Navajo Nation uh, to Oakland and a lot of my work right now is supporting the transition a just transition to a cleaner way to power our homes a cleaner way to power our our cities our towns our communities where I come from, we've been dealing with fossil fuel extraction for 50 years. We have seen the damage that industry has done. The Army Corps of Engineers. You guys, these government processes where they try to, you know, push through these uh, proposals, these uh, proposed uh, expansion, whether it's mining, extraction, they do it in a way where there is no input from the people. They do it in a way when they don't translate these agreements in the, our own indigenous language. There are ways that they go about it to make sure that their proposal that is company driven, fossil fuel company driven, gets what they want. is more money, you know, more uh, basically supplying an unsustainable way of you know, creating power. And I think, you know, with the work that I've been doing, it's been a really big lesson. I've been working with the Indigenous Environmental Network, a lot of great organizations here in the Bay, environmental justice organizations, climate justice organizations, but also a lot of grassroots organizations that are mobilizing, using nonviolent di direct action to be able to come together in prayer like this, with this, the Standing Rock um, Reservation. It's really beautiful because that's the vision that we often we see. And this, this resistance and this power of prayer, what it can do is so amazing. And it's so, I can feel it. We can feel it. And we just wanted to be here in solidarity because we understand as coming from a community that lives two miles from one of the biggest coal operations in northern Arizona. Peabody. Yes, Peabody still there, still blasting. And we have seen the damage that is done to our only groundwater source, the Navajo Aquifer, that has supplied cheap energy for five million homes, California, Nevada, Arizona, for over 50 years. And what do we get in return? We get our water damage. We get the health impacts. And so we've seen this in our communities. 
And so I'm standing with Standing Rock today as a family, as a community, to say that we don't want this in their backyard. And Black Mesa is a very sacred place, like all of our land is so sacred. We hold so much. And with the Ohlone people, we know this land is extremely sacred. And you have that connection. I just want to build that solidarity and continue to encourage my, my relatives to stay strong up in Standing Rock and the Lakota people and the people in that land. It's really beautiful. We've been there. She's been there. And so I just want to say, yeah, for all of you, continue to donate, continue to raise the awareness. Let's continue to come back in front of this building and say we're not going to go away. This resistance is going to grow even more. And our children can be able to create that ability to create that change. Thank you, Alea. Thank you for so much for your work. Um, there are uh, folks walking around with uh, water for prayers, and um, if I could, um, yeah, more support. If I could get uh, about five of our uh, folks that have or joined security to come up front for a minute. Five folks with the red things on your arm. <laughs> Yeah? 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 No? Alberto! 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 Michael! <laughs> Tommy! Oh, there you go. Carson. All right. He's like, I didn't get a red band, so I didn't know. <laughs> Ethan! So um, there's um, some buckets right here that are red buckets. And these red buckets are specifically to um, donate to, go, uh, to, donate to the, um, the folks that are standing on the front lines. So if you guys can dig into your pockets and give a couple of dollars, today we would mm -hmm. like to send uh, send off some money for supplies that they're needing out there. Folks are needing uh, food. Uh, you heard that they cut off the water supply. When uh, Indian people organizing for change and other groups uh, were in Vallejo holding down a sacred site, the first thing they did was cut off the water supply. So it's a strategy for these folks to do that, right? But our people are standing strong, so we need to get water there. We need to make sure that they have food and they have shelter. So we need to do our part. And standing in solidarity means putting your hand in your pocket and pulling out that money for your coffee for tomorrow and put it in this bucket today, right? So that's what it means today. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna put up some money together. We're also gonna put some money together. So part of this money will also go to the Legal Defense Fund. So folks that got arrested out there for protecting water will have some legal defense, right? <clears throat> so while folks are, where's Coyote Valley? to be on stage next. Robin Navarro, Salapongan, and International Coalition for Human Rights in the Philippines is going to speak on the issues of indigenous fighting to protect their lands in Minadano. I may have said that wrong and I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hello, can everybody hear me? Good evening, everyone. Salipungan International and the International Coalition for Human Rights in the Philippines, ITRIP, stands in solidarity with the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and activists on the front lines of stopping the Dakota Access Pipeline. We are outraged about the unjust and unfair conditions of the indigenous people protecting the water and land. 
for the Luman, or indigenous people of Mindanao, Philippines. They too believe that land and water is life. When big corporations come and strip the land, livelihoods are negatively impacted. We have seen the results of these atrocities firsthand. Who will reap from the benefit? Who will reap the benefits for this pipeline project? Not the st Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, but the gr Greedy Energy Transfer Corporation and investors. That's right. The indigenous people will not benefit from this pipeline. Instead, it will contaminate and destruct their main water source and land. Energy Transfer's website states. We will listen to and address questions from the community. If they really listen to the community, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe's concerns would be put into action. We have heard the story of big corporations listening to the community way too many times. We must work together to end these unjust environmental projects. Similar to the indigenous people's struggle in the United States, like the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, the Lumad are currently fighting to save their land from multinational large-scale mining and logging corporations whose intentions to extract resources from the land would not only continu continue to displace thousands, but also cause irreversible and severe environmental destruction. The Lumad are fighting to preserve their culture and livelihood in the face of such aggression by these companies and the military-backed militia who violently defend corporate interests. As they resist, the previous government intensified repression and attacks as it allowed the military to kill and arrest leaders of the indigenous communities, even volunteers, teachers of the schools. With a new president who announces that, is, that he is for peace in our country, our calls remain. Stop Luma killings and environmental plunder. Salakpungan and Aichar calls on the international community to keep its focus on the unjust conditions of the indigenous people of the Philippines and United States. We need to work together to continue and support the fight to stop the environmental destruction of their ancestral lands. We must be outspoken against the continued human rights violations. These environmental atrocities must be stopped, and those who have already committed these acts must be held accountable. In a recent New York Times art article, Phyllis Young, a member of the Standing Rock Sioux states, we are Dakota. Dakota means friend or ally. Dakota Access has taken our name. Let us stand as a friend and ally with the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe now, in this time of need. We must stop the Dakota Access Pipeline from further destruction. Let us stand together to fight for all indigenous people's lands and livelihoods throughout the world. Long live international solidarity! Long live international solidarity! Thank you very much. Okay, I, I was supposed to have a friend of mine, Valerie. Is Valerie out here somewhere? She coming? I haven't seen her. We haven't seen her. Okay, we we got a pommel on the loose in the city. So if you guys find one, um, she's supposed to come and offer a song. But I'm gonna ask uh, Hartman Dietz to come up. Uh, oh. Oh, okay. Hold on. But, but before Hartman comes up, we have. Uh, Ready? Granny. Thank you, Auntie. Uh, good, good afternoon, relatives. I'm, I'm Granny, uh, also known as Chotiman. I'm, I'm an MC. I'm originally from what is now known as Mexico. Uh, I want to honor the Ohlone people of this land and all of the relatives of this land and my, my, um, my ancestors 
which come from the Kikapu and the Purepecha. I was in Standing Rock a few days ago. I came back uh, three days ago, four days ago. Uh, and it was really amazing to be there because I had not seen that many nations gathered to fight for a river in a long time in my life. And so I think it, it's really important that all of us here who live in this, in this state with a lot of privileges that we honor the river and that we honor the water and that we honor our relatives in North Dakota and that we support them. If you are able to go, you need to be there. They need bodies. They need people. They need people that want to protect. They're not looking, they're not looking for, how you might call it? They're not looking for resistance fighters. They're looking for protectors. We're protecting the land, we're protecting the water. And so, if you feel moved by the spirit to fight for the water, you have to show support to the relatives in North Dakota, the Sioux Nation. That water connects all of us, all of us. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what nation you come from. All that, that water is in all of us. It's in all of our waters. We have to stand up for this. Thank you. Today, thank you. Today, another uh, indigenous sister of mine from the Seneca, from the Seneca Nation. Another sister of mine and I are organizing an event today in Oakland at Soul Space, and all the proceeds are gonna go to the struggle in North Dakota. Right. So if anybody knows somebody in Oakland, please share the word and please, please keep supporting. This fight is not over. This fight started before April when they set up camp. This, this fight started when the colonizers came and this fight's gonna keep going. And we got the spirit, I hope.